Before the collapse, speakers were chosen for their ability to hear the traveller through detailed lucid dreams. Since the dreams have stopped, there are other signs. Ghosts follow us. When we do dream, we see a strange and blinding white light. We are prone to headaches. Welcome back Guardians. With the release of Season of Dawn, we get the origin story of the speaker. Not only do we get the background information about how the speaker came to be, but we also get an explanation of the speaker's mask. This has always been a mysterious object in Destiny and even described as legendary. As a reminder, Destiny A and Z have given me a pair of the official Destiny Moon Boots to give away. Anyone can enter, please see my Saint 14 video for entry details. This is Mylan Games and I hope you enjoy this latest Destiny Lore episode. Let's begin. We previously assumed that throughout history there has been more than one speaker, but it was never really confirmed and only ever hinted at. The Destiny 1 Grimmel card, The Speaker, reads, There has always been a speaker, an anonymous high priest with a mysterious and powerful connection to the Traveller and its ghosts. In all the centuries of the city's history, the speaker's great work has never changed, to guide new guardians, heal the Traveller, and raise our crippled protector from its slumber. In the new lore released with Season of Dawn, it is confirmed that there were multiple speakers, people who were born with an innate connection with the Traveller. These individuals were able to hear the Traveller through dreams. The singing lore entry from the lore book Constellations reads, Before the collapse, speakers were chosen for their ability to hear the Traveller through detailed lucid dreams. Since the dreams have stopped, there are other signs. Ghosts follow us. When we do dream, we see a strange and blinding white light. We are prone to headaches. I believe this also explains another mystery of destiny, the dreams of Alpha Lupi. The dreams of Alpha Lupi are a collection of Grimmel cards that appear to be written from the perspective of the Traveller. However, I think now that they are written by a speaker who is having these visions of the Traveller through the dreams. In the new lore, one speaker describes how he struggles to keep his mind separate from the Traveller, that their thoughts start to blend together. This speaker witnesses the collapse. Have a listen to the Severing lore entry. It reads, I am the speaker who witnesses the end of the world. Through it all, I am overwhelmed by torrents of sharp static images, sometimes so fast and constant that I can't see or hear. The Traveller is babbling telling me everything and nothing all at once, in fast, stereoscopic, waking nightmares. I am myself and not myself. And I am stuck in a web of black spider silk, frozen in the mind-numbing silence of space, have no answers. I try to aid the relief effort, but my thoughts run, become more and more scattered. I can't run, keep separate my own mind, run, and the run 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 travelers you can see how the text was written it has the thoughts of the traveler spliced into the thoughts of the speaker disrupting the sentence there are even more interesting speakers mentioned in the new law one speaker is the very first person to witness the making of a guardian the revival of the dead by a ghost into a guardian it's a really cool scene have a listen to the law entry waking it reads i am the first speaker to see a ghost. The ghost leads me to a barn with a sagging roof. She asks me to wait out of sight. She says, I think you'll scare her. I don't fully understand what she means. I crouch and watch as she hovers over the years old remains of a person, barely recognizable as something that was once living. The ghost floats over the body nervously and then scans it with pale light. In front of my eyes, flesh grows over old bones and tattered rags stitch themselves together. The person, a woman, gasps and sits up. I can't believe it. An important thing to note, it doesn't seem like any of the speakers were ever guardians. Ghosts actually followed them around. The ghosts were attracted to them because of their connection to the light. But the speakers didn't seem to be guardians. Have a listen to the building law entry. It reads, Beside me, a silver ghost spins his shell, floating at my shoulder. 
watching Ephrodite. He's followed me for over a year now and still hasn't found his chosen. He's good company. There are in fact multiple examples of this in the book, with ghosts following the speakers around, but not necessarily making them a guardian. So how does all of this explain the speaker that we knew and his mask? Well, the speaker that we knew did not receive the dreams from the traveler, but I believe this was because of the collapse. So even though he did not receive the traveler's dreams, he was being trained by another speaker to learn how to interpret them just in case the traveler would start broadcasting its dreams again. It seems like our speaker was a legitimate speaker because ghosts were following him and it was known that ghosts tended to cluster around the speakers. And so even though he was not receiving the dreams at this point, it does appear like he was a legitimate speaker. See if you agree. Have a listen to the law entry singing. It reads, I'm the first speaker to never dream. At least, I think that's true. In the days following the collapse, any speakers who survived were scattered to the wind, travelling with groups of refugees across the ruined wasteland that Earth became. Aside from the man who taught me, I never met another speaker in my life, for all I know I'm the last one alive. Before the collapse, speakers were chosen for their ability to hear the traveller through detailed lucid dreams. Since the dreams have stopped, there are other signs. Ghosts follow us. When we do dream, we see a strange and blinding white light. We are prone to headaches. My mentor couldn't teach me how to interpret dreams, so he taught me in hypotheticals. I had to imagine what the dreams might be like. I had to speculate why the traveller might come back to us and when. Like all speakers, I memorised the four tenets. The traveller is good. The traveller is sentient. The traveller will save us. The traveller will leave us. Sometimes I worry the traveller has already left us. My mentor died of a wasting sickness two years ago, and I've tried to live as his replacement, but where he was a living memory of when the traveller was awake, I have only his memories, secondhand imperfectly understood. I can't give answers, I can't make the traveller speak, or at least I couldn't. So you may see where this is going, the speaker we knew has been trained as a speaker, but has never received the dreams of the traveller, likely because of the collapse. The speaker creates a mask, the mask becomes an amplifier and allows the speaker to hear the traveller. Really cool, have a listen. I can't make the traveller speak, or at least I couldn't. For weeks I've worked in secret on a project, gathering scrap metal and old broken things left over from the time before. I've cobbled it together, tinkered with a mix of strange and half understood technology, tried to calibrate it to my needs. A long time ago, long before the collapse, astrophysicists recorded sounds from the planets in our solar system and turned them into music. They translated plasma waves and radio emissions into eerie musical rumbles, roars, whistles and hisses. The traveller makes sounds too. Speakers have listened to its music for many years, in the form of dreams. Carefully, longingly, I build a mask, an amplifier. No one knows about it but me. I won't get their hopes up, even though mine are sky high as I put the finishing touches on it. It's not beautiful like our old technology was. It is scuffed and bent and rusted like everything we own now. But if I'm right, if I can do this, it will do beautiful things. I can't bear to fail. I have failed to everything else so far. When I'm finished, I wear the mask. Pieces of it, not sanded down, are rough and sharp against my face. But I dream for the first time in my life. I have cried out unheard for so long that my voice is raw. Wow, that last sentence is a traveller actually speaking to the speaker for the first time since the collapse. I have cried out unheard for so long that my voice is raw. So there you have it. The speaker never received the dreams of a traveller until he created the mask. The mask acted as an amplifier and allowed him to receive the messages from the traveller. On a side note, I have no idea how the speaker lived for so long if he was not a guardian. I'm hoping to look into that a bit more a little bit later on. But with that, that concludes this latest Destiny 2 lore episode. If you'd like to support the channel and cannot think of a comment, you can leave the word amplifier to represent the speaker's mask acting as an amplifier. As usual, it has been a pleasure. 
This is Marlin Games. Peace.